Welcome back to the uh, second portion of uh, Durham Election 2010. Doug Anderson, Garth Riley here. Uh, during the break, we had a lively conversation. Not that it's a topic for this one, but apparently Doug Anderson likes photo radar. What are you, nuts? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no objection to taxing speeders. It's because you're old and you're slow. <laughs> That's what you do. All right, well, let's get back on topic because we look like those two old guys from the Muppets. All right, so um, we have our guests here right now, and yeah, representative, and let's get on with the next question. Well, during the break, uh, Jeremy was actually talking about the question of leadership. And one of the issues of leadership is that you guys are supposed to, when you get elected, you're supposed to be representing people. So how do you reconcile the need to be a leader with the need to represent people who may not agree with you? Mike. <laughs> <laughs> now they're all stunned <laughs> Basically, you have to get their trust. You have to go to their house. You have to knock on their door, talk to them. Not just election time, but every time. There's an area in down, downtown uh, called Kasna, the Salina Albert Street area. They've had some issues with crack houses and that. Some of the politicians that were there, their, their two ward uh, people were never around. They never came around. I started going to see them uh, back in April I've been working with them since, and the whole neighborhood, I've got to trust with them. And I think that's what has to happen, be it in social media or newspapers. I guess really coming back to me, while it's great that you're doing that, and one of the questions is, you know, there's a leadership issue where you take the bull by the horns, you say, I'm going to, you know, go ahead and go forward. Then there's this other issue where, you know, uh, being a leader also means that you're the first one to get swung at. Oh, no and, uh, you know, we watch a lot of local politicians cave in to small, very vocal, special interest groups that don't represent the majority of the public, and yet the media irresponsibly picks up on this garbage, and it makes it tough for you to stand your ground. Now, you've never been in politics. You guys have not been in local seats before, never. have you? No. Right? So how would you handle it differently? We've all observed this, the shenanigans that goes on. How do you handle How do you stand in the fire? and yet still be a leader, but also still look like you're caring even for those small, sometimes whack job groups that are kind of just doing everything they can to make your life miserable. How, how do you handle it as a leader or as a, or as a, as a community involved person? I think in, as politicians, I, well, I, first of all, I believe in the democratic process, which means that I believe as an elected official, I'm there to represent the majority of the constituents who elected me, even if that opinion is contrary to what I believe. I'm not there to bring to pass my own particular vision of what should happen. I'm there to represent the people that elected me. Mm. Within that group, there are smaller groups who have individual needs. And I think we need to be compassionate toward the needs of all of our constituents. And there may be special needs situations or unique situations that need to be addressed. And then, as a leader, what we have to do is we have to raise the awareness of the rest of our constituents that really these people have a justifiable concern and we as a group should address that concern. Okay. Jeremy. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that um, I personally believe the old saying, you treat others the way you want to be treated. And uh, for example, uh, by me coming over to Clarington and speaking on the Winchester intersection, a lot of people from Clarenton travel through there, but I was out there holding up the stoplight and because I believe, you know, that's making a difference for the people of Clarenton and going out of your way and lobbying like that, it's, that's what you gotta do to make a difference and it worked. They lowered the speed limit and, right. uh, and when you when you come across people who have their own personal opinions and you got to respect that and yeah i mean you can uh, respect that i mean uh, the hard part is actually you know catching on to it but i like the idea that you actually went out uh municipality wise and said we have to do what's right right across the region which maybe springboards me to a, can i grab a question on this one sure you can. uh you know this is an idea that we kind of find many politicians and i've seen it in the lobbying i've done with certain things i believe in they, everybody says well it's beyond our purview we may be local councillors but it's a regional issue uh it's not it doesn't really involve it involves a school board and as and then you know you're able to brush it off 
some of the major issues I find are is that it, that's an easy thing for you to say. It's beyond your peer review. Or the next thing you learn is we'll refer it to community, which means, uh, sorry, to committee. I've been in, in front of presenting, and they say, oh, we're going to refer it to committee, which is another way of saying it's never going to get looked at. You now have an opportunity, should you decide to become leaders and get elected, how are you going to behave when something comes up on your doorstep that is clearly not part of your purview, but it needs a voice? Are you going to shuffle them? What are you going to do? Many of the issues that, that I hear don't fall under the purview of regional politics. But nonetheless, if I'm elected to represent those people, I am elected to represent them in whatever their concern is. If that concern is out of the purview of regional politics and I have to go to the members of provincial parliament or the med members of federal parliament, uh, I'm going to do that. Or if I have to go to other politicians in other municipalities, I'm going to do that. That's my job. Mike? He's got to, because he's running regional, that's a little, it seems a little different, but I'm running uh, local. And you know what? It doesn't matter. There's three seats in local. You still have to still think regional. You can't just sit there and say it's my little bailiwick. It's, that's not a not a a true meaning. Jerry, uh, bottom line is you, you got to learn to if you work together with other municipalities, you get positive results. And I just I feel that at the two or tier system, there's a, a lack of relationship there. And uh, I hope that uh, I would like to see all the new new candidates or whoever gets in the next election is to uh, be able to communicate better with the, with the public and uh, lobby for the public at the regional level and make, make things happen. Doug? Yeah. Um, okay, let, 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 let's, let's go into um, an environmental question, or at least, or at least somewhat environmental. Um, obviously, transportation is, I think, the major source of greenhouse gases. And we have 401 already uh, constantly being enlarged. We've got the 407 proposed, and we've got uh, GO trains proposed, etc. cetera. Um, all of this stuff is basically funded by the province, very largely, et cetera. Very much. It's very expensive. Now, if the province were to suddenly uh, kind of say, listen, we can't afford it all, so why don't you know, we want Durham Region to choose, which would you choose? I mean, you're basically all in, in, in Clarington and Oshawa. Now, Osh Oshawa Council made a big, big kerfuffle when they said it's going to end, end, end at Simcoe Street. Um, I think Clarington probably made a big kerfuffle or two. Um, but the, the, the issue is, I mean, do we need the 407? Or would we be better off completing the uh, completing the GO train out to uh, out, out to pass say, Newcastle or something like that? Why don't we do this? Sorry, we're gonna. I just got the uh, one minute sign, so we'll come back. We're gonna come back with that question. So you have an extra few seconds to oh. figure it out, and we'll come back and ask you what you want to do. Do you want to expand what you do? Do you want to grow what you have? Uh, you know, do you want to, uh, or do you want to figure out uh, that people should be walking and taking horses and buggies? Of course, I don't know. If, can you do that? Uh, isn't that greenhouse gas? Isn't that another one? Methane gas. Sure. Yeah, we can ride. But it's it is sustainable, though. <laughs> <laughs> so big beans in a camp tent. All right, we'll be right back with more of uh, the Durham election of 2012, or 2010 after this. Yeah, 2012. What am I talking about?